Hey there, I'm TJ Hoisington, and tonight I was asked to be a guest speaker on a weekly briefing call for a company called Legal Shield. My brother has worked that business for a lot of years. He's a leader in the business. He's done well for himself. And Steve called me and said, hey, TJ, do you mind just sharing some concepts on high performance and high achievement? So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. You already know. My passion and my mission to help you unleash your greatness with them. My heart goes out to the underdogs. That, that's on their way. If you think you can, go from good to great. Okay, let's motivate. Now, before we jump into the briefing, let me just say I have a special place in my heart for Legal Shield. Why? Because it was back in 2004, 2005, my back was against the wall financially. We had almost lost everything, and in my darkest moment, I decided I was going to write a book. I had never done that before, but I believed that something had to change. I had to do something audacious and big, and that's what I did. And before the book was published, I had no publisher, I sent out some rough manuscripts to some people, and one of them was the founder of Legal Shield. You see, the founder of Legal Shield, Harlan Stonecipher, read my rough manuscript, loved the message, got to know me a little bit through some colleagues, believed in me, called me up one day and said, would you speak at our upcoming national convention? I said, absolutely. He said, would you also have books available? I said, absolutely. How many people will you have in the audience? He said, 15,000 people. I said, are you telling me I probably should have 15,000 books there? He says, you bet. I thought, no problem. But the reality was, I didn't know where I was going to go to get that money. Anyway, long story short, I borrowed the money from my brother, and the rest is history. That was a lot of years ago. And so as a special thank you to Legal Shield for really helping me out at a dark time, I tell you what, it, it catapulted my business. And to say thank you to Legal Shield, I've often donated time to the business. If you haven't looked into the business of Legal Shield, look into it. They have services that can help you in the area of uh, legal, if you need an attorney, right? Legal situations, if you get a speeding ticket, if you have a contract you need reviewed, if you need a will prepared, I, and the list goes on and on and on. It's unlimited. I mean, it really is. Or if you have issues with identity theft, I tell you what, they have a plan out there that is really beneficial. I'm not being paid to plug them as a business, but I'm very thankful, a lot of gratitude here over the years for being able to participate in Legal Shield functions and the role that Harlan Stonecipher, the founder, played in my future success. He has since passed on, but you know what? His spirit still lives with me. All right, without any further ado, let's jump right into the briefing. DJ, my brother, I love you. I'm going to turn the call over to you, man. All right. Thanks, Steve. Hello, everyone. It's great uh, to have you, uh, to be on your call tonight. It's always a joy to hang out and play with you guys, and I look forward to later this month um, spending some time with you as well. You know, when Steve, just a quick thought, when Steve talked about getting, and Brenda talked about getting your round trip tickets to national convention, what went through my head was, uh, when I worked with Tony Robbins, one of the, probably one of the number one things I learned working with him was this concept, raise your standards. All high achievers, hold themselves to a higher standard. When everybody else is relaxing, they're still out there hustling. And so, um, you know, push yourself is my message. High achievers, those that achieve um, just higher levels of success, right? Because there are achievers and there are non-achievers and then there are mediocre achievers. And I assume by you being on this call, you desire to be a high achiever. But that also leads me to a thought You can't just be a meeting goer or a meeting person. Show up at all the meetings, right? The effectiveness of your business is what you do in between the meetings. So tonight, I'm going to go kind of random on you. I threw a bunch of ideas together, and I haven't gone through it in my mind. So you're getting the raw, the raw TJ Hoisington here. A couple things I would make mention of is make sure that you are following me um, 
on my podcast, right? If you go to iTunes, type in my name, TJ Hoisington, or you can go to iHeartRadio and there's other uh, Spotify and so forth, or you, my YouTube channel, by, by going to YouTube, I encourage you to go there and subscribe because every single week I am po posting insights and ideas around high performance. And the way to get to each one of those channels, whether it be iTunes or YouTube, is just type in my name, TJ Hoisington. All right. One of the things that I do regularly on both those channels is I get the opportunity of interviewing high achievers. And by the way, I get on the average three to four requests per day to have guests, for me to interview guests on my podcast. We, we, our podcast goes out to over 100,000 people, and so and it's growing every single month. So it's, uh, it's really cool. We've landed on iTunes number one several times, number two, number three several times as well. But hey, I will tell you, I'll give you a little inside scoop. Um, I just interviewed two classy achievers, if you will. I had the good fortune a week ago of interviewing Hortz Schulze. This interview won't go out for over another month. So this we did an early interview. It won't go out until a little bit later. He is the co-founder of Ritz-Carlton Hotels. You talk about going to the top. He's one of them, and we're going to start doing some work together as a little side note. Um, the other person I interviewed two weeks ago, and his interview is going to come out in a little over a month, so you want to make sure you subscribe so you get it when it comes out, is a guy named Rich Carlgaard, who is the publisher of Forbes magazine. Pretty cool, right? But he wrote this, and I will tell you what, this book called Late Bloomers, I don't know where you're at today. I will say this, though. Your past doesn't have to equal your future, right? No matter where you're at. And the beautiful thing about this book, which I think might be pertinent to tonight's call, is he talks about how many people, that the brain does not fully develop, the latest research shows, until about age 31 years old, right? Based on the latest research. And what he says is there are a lot of late bloomers, in, right? The subtitle is, the power, you can't even get this book yet, right? This is one of the things I get early on when I'm gonna interview someone. The power of patience in a world obsessed with early achievement. And he writes a book on it and he points out several things that if you're over the age of 40, you have assets that the younger generation doesn't have. And you can learn those in his book and I'm not here to promote his book, but I did learn a number of things by interviewing him. Uh, let me just, I'm just going to open up random pages here. When it comes to willpower, he says, um, you can make some withdrawals on willpower, but we can't make unlimited withdrawals. So you have to choose wisely. Here's my thought, just as a, a thought, is when it comes to willpower, I've been studying this for 20 years. Willpower is, you don't want to rely on willpower to succeed. Right, Because that requires you to burn up a lot of energy, staying focused, and you can't. You want success to be natural and free-flowing. And that means success, your habits, your dif disciplines become second nature. And that's what you want to develop, right? You don't want to go to a surgeon or a dentist. I went today to the dentist for my cleaning. You don't want to go to the dentist, someone who does, let's say, surgery and has a great day every once in a while, right? You want someone who is consistently doing a great job. That is consistent and free-flowing, right? It's a natural habit. It's a natural discipline. They're not using willpower to succeed. When you look at, um, uh, let's see, Brady or Russell Wilson, right? Um, Tom Brady, he doesn't have to think consciously, moment to moment, each move. No, he's done it so long with so much proficiency that it comes natural. And so when he's under pressure, it's guys like him and Russell Wilson, and we can name a few others, right? They have the ability under pressure to perform well. And why are they able to do that? It comes down to preparation, holding themselves high 
to a high standard over a period of time that when the pressure is on, their success comes natural. Now, I'll just point, I know our time is limited, so I'll point another thing out. I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be sharing a video. I happen to run in an old rare video of Tony Robbins, and I've been teaching this. I don't think he taught me this. I knew this from reading Think and Grow Rich and some uh, s several other books, is here's the reality. If I were to draw a stick person, right, and I were to divide the head in half, you would have the conscious mind, and you would have, so the top part would, would represent the conscious mind, and the lower part would represent the subconscious mind. I'm gonna put out a little video within a minute. It's gonna be a minute long video that I'll put on Instagram. So you can follow me there as well on Instagram, uh, just at TJ Hoisington. But he says that if you will bombard your thinking, your conscious mind, right? If you pour data in your conscious mind and you embrace that idea or that plan or that vision, meaning you have emotion associated with it, it will drop down into the subconscious mind. And once something is in the subconscious mind, it is like you to perform at a higher level. Once it's there, it becomes your truth and reality. And let me just point a little couple of distinctions out. The conscious mind takes in the data. It judges, it can analyze, it can make decisions, right? But the subconscious mind just takes in the data. It accepts it as truth and reality. What, and I put quotation marks around that because it's not necessarily truth and reality. But the subconscious mind will accept, ex accept it that way. And Joyce Brothers uh, once taught and became famous on this concept. She would say that the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between something that was vividly imagined and something that was um, uh, really happened. And so one of the powerful things there is you've got to realize getting the right data, the right belief systems, the right strategies of thought into the subconscious mind is vital for your success. And that is a drip, drip, drip approach. What are you reading on a regular basis? What are you saying to yourself on a regular basis? right? Is it lifting you? Is it moving you to a new place? When's the last time you wrote down goals and then looked at them every single day? You know, Grant Cardone, I, you know, I know that Grant Cardone was at one of your recent, you know, conferences. Grant Cardone says to write a goal down, your goals down every single day. Yes, rewrite it every single day. Now the key, although writing is uh, very impactful, Stephen Covey said it actually helps to to create those neural pathways in your brain by writing it down. Make sure that you write your goals down. But the key is, is that you go to those goals in your mind, you imagine them, and then you, through vision, discipline yourself to take action consistently. Nothing convinces the subconscious mind than dwelling on that picture and then acting on it consistently, day in, day in, day out, right? That will help you be successful. Now, here's an interesting thing in terms of subjective reality. We all see the world in a very subjective way. If you've been to my trainings, you know that oftentimes I'll have everyone point to the future. I'll have them close their eyes and then point to the future. And everybody points to a different place. Some people point to themselves, some people point forward, some people point straight up, some people point sideways, some people even point down. There's no right or wrong with that. All it is is an internal representation of what reality is. Here is the challenge. State of mind, your state of mind to take action or your state of mind will govern your behavior or performance or the quality thereof. Depending, now what, what controls your state of mind? Here's what controls your state of mind at any given moment. Number one, your internal representation and also your physiology, the way that you move your body and what you consume. What you eat plays a role into your state of mind. You eat chocolate and you like chocolate and you're feeling down, hey, that might give you a little bit of boost. If you drink 
you know, let's say coffee. I don't drink coffee, but if you drink coffee, hey, for many people that gives them a boost, that affects their state of mind. Well, so what you imagine will affect your state of mind and what you consume will affect your state of mind. And to those together will determine your output or your results or your actions. And so making sure that you have that. But in terms of your internal representation, how we are all subjective, one thing I learned from Tony Robbins when I worked for him, he says all successful people are unreasonable. <laughs> successful people aren't always realists, right? They see a vision of something that's out there that's exciting, and then they discover a way that they can make that a reality. Steve Jobs was a classic example of that with the reality distortion field. When nobody else, his engineers, could not see a path forward, he would say, there's a path forward. Keep dreaming, keep thinking, it'll come to you. And then eventually it would come. Check out this classic story in uh, psychology. There was a man who believed he was a corpse. He wouldn't eat, he won't work. He just sits around claiming that he is a corpse. He meets with a psychologist who tries to convince him that he's not really dead. They have many arguments back and forth, but the man believes he's dead. Finally, the psychiatrist says, do corpse bleed? The man thinks about it and responds, no. All bodily functions have stopped, so there is no need for blood. The psychiatrist says, okay, let's try an experiment. I will take a needle, I will prick your finger, and see if you bleed. Since the patient is a corpse in his imagination, in his, in his internal reality at the subconscious level, there's not much he can do about it, so the psychologist pricks his finger, and lo and behold, what happens? The man starts to bleed. The man looks down at his finger, totally amazed, and what does he say? His response is, dang, corpse do bleed. Here's the reality when it comes to the way we think. Every day, we're either conforming, confirming in our minds our current reality, or we are confirming that we deserve a better reality. And when you've confirmed that there's a better reality out there for you, here's what will happen. Here's what will happen when you do that. It will create cognitive dissonance. When you are here, reality, your reality today, but you are dreaming about something exciting that is way up here, this gap be between here and here is what we call cognitive dissonance. The mind cannot serve two masters. And so it either retreats to the lower reality because that's the comfort zone, or it will create a lot of energy that will drive you to make this new image a reality in the real world. And so this is a powerful thing. A nuclear bomb isn't as strong as cognitive dissonance at a real deep level. When you're out of sync with what you believe to be reality, it will create energy that is powerful. So imagine if you can do that with yourself. Imagine if you could set goals so powerful and so big, yes, using vision boards and so forth, but create a plan in your mind that you're excited about and that you dwell on every day. You will be drawn to this picture. Will it feel a little bit uncomfortable? Of course it will. But as Mark Twain once said, right, do the thing you fear and eventually the thing you fear will dissipate. So you got to remember in those moments of frustration and fear when you're taking action, understand as you continue taking that action, like calling people, approaching people, you say, but I'm a TJ, I'm an introvert. Well, let me tell you something. You can grow to be more of an extrovert. And I'm telling you, it's about dwelling on that image of what it means and what it looks like to be more outgoing, to be more confident, to be a higher achiever in alignment with your goals and then dwelling on it enough that you're drawn to it, that, that by not achieving it creates pain. And that pain 
is good. You want that pain. The moment you don't feel pain from stretching, then I worry that you might be heading downhill. All right, let's see, what else can I say real quick? Oh, in terms of reality, I don't know if you can see that right there. It says, justice grinds. A man want, wants back in jail. Let me just read a couple highlighted points here. This man spent 22 years of 45 years in the penitentiary. He broke out of the penitentiary, or no, he didn't break, sorry, I misspoke there. That's another story. He didn't break out of the penitentiary. He was released, his time was served. And what did he do? He went two months later and he robbed a bank and sat on the sidewalk next to the bank until the police arrived. Why did he do that? He stood in front of the judge. He said, I'm a 10 time loser. The judge says, how do you plead? And the man said, quote, I want to go home. Where do you think home is or was for that person? You bet, prison, why? Because he had got comfortable with this reality down here. He said, I'm a, t a 10 time loser. He found, the report said, he found the, the eight weeks of freedom to be quote unquote terrifying. So here's the reality. Look at, your words matter. The way you think matter. You probably remember this from several years ago. Maravich's words foretold his death. He said, I don't want to play in the, M he says, I don't want to play 10 years in the NBA and die of a heart attack at age 40. What do you think happened at age 40? He died of a heart attack. I'm telling you, the word, if you think you can, right? If you haven't read If You Think You Can, I would encourage you to do so. The thoughts you put in your mind and you repeat over and over will attract and you will move toward those dominating thoughts. I didn't come up with those principles. They've been around for thousands of years. And I'm telling you, if all you gotta do is just apply it. We live in a time and an age where there are so many resources at your fingertips, right? Personal development all around you. But let me tell you something, personal development won't do anything good for you except make you feel good for the moment if you're not willing to take action. The key to all success, the laws of success say you reap what you sow. It says you've got to take action. So all the inspiration in your world that you can conjure up and that you can think about and dream about must lead you to action, must lead you to discipline. Now, I would say to just rely on discipline isn't enough. You've got to lead with vision, a vision in your mind of something that's exciting that your subconscious mind will accept. Okay, something that when it's emotional and you can feel it, the subconscious mind will believe that it's reality and that you deserve it, which will create cognitive dissonance and propel you to that new place. Don't get comfortable. All right, did I have anything else here that maybe, okay, here's the last thing. We don't have time to go into the story, but I will share this. If you've ever read the book, I just spoke uh, on Saturday. We'll be releasing this on YouTube and on the uh, podcast. But I spoke for 20 minutes at a meeting where I talked about Viktor Frankl, who wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And this is what he said at the conclusion of spending a lot of time in the concentration camps and so forth. Uh, and I tell you, it was a horrible, hor Corey Ten Boom was another person that just unbelievable what those people had to go through. But Viktor Frankl went on to sell, to write a book that changed millions of people's lives. And this is what he said. He said, our core drive as humans is our search for meaning. The way that a man or a woman accepts his or her fate and all the suffering that it entails, the way in which he takes up his cross gives him ample opportunity, even under the most difficult circumstances, to add more meaning to his life. This is the core of the human spirit. If we can find something to live for. You guys have a great business opportunity. Fall in love with it. 
You won't work another day in your life if you will fall in love with your goals, if you'll fall in love with your career. And if your career is painful, change it. Do something to change it. My son just came back from a two-year mission in Romania. My other son's in Serbia. They're in the old Eastern Bloc. You know what they tell me? Now, they're young Americans that grew up in a mindset that was open and free, particularly in our home. They said over there, Dad, they, in many respects, they can't think on their own. Generations are so comfortable receiving and being told what to do and receiving a handout, if you will, that they can't think on their own, almost in a sense, in many respects, sort of a robot, if you will. We live in a country where that is not necessary. There are freedoms in many respects that allow you to go achieve your goals and your dreams. So change your mindset, believe in what's possible and what's possible, set some goals, write them down, review them on a daily basis, and I promise you, your dreams and goals will come true. All right, thanks for having me on your little call. I wish we could have more time because you know it. I got all kinds of stuff here. Maybe I'll bring it. Got journals. I was going to open up random pages and share it with you. I'm telling you, just never enough time. I hope that was meaningful to you and useful and that you'll apply these concepts that I've shared. Thank you for letting me be on your business call tonight. EJ, you're awesome. You're awesome, brother. So you're still the spotlight video. I'm going to ask you one question. Is there anything, okay. you, any last thing you would tell uh, the Pacific Northwest. I know you're coming in and, and you're just, you really do it out of the kindness of your heart. And I want to thank you. So, uh, but anything you'd like to add in terms of uh, the importance of coming or the value of coming or uh, maybe even uh, just any thoughts? I know. No, straight, straight up. I said it in the beginning. You have to be there. If you're really serious about success, you've got to show up to the meetings. And then here's the other thing I would say, knowing your business, prospecting is key. No sales, no improvement, no growth happens without prospecting. Every day, reaching out to someone, right? Getting referrals or reaching out to someone new or striking up a conversation when you're pumping your car for gas or whatever, or you're in a store. Hey, have courage, right? Everybody's favorite subject is themselves. So don't rush in and talk about yourself. Ask them questions about themselves. And eventually they'll say, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm telling you, it's amazing where I can go and make good friends with people. I never meet them again afterwards, but in that moment, we're like great friends. And I spend 80% of the time asking them questions. And then eventually the natural you know, order of things is they'll, they'll begin to ask me questions and then there we go, right? And I can't tell you how many do doors have opened. I ended up doing business with someone who was a general in, I think, the army several years ago. I met him in a Costco um, gas station unit, right? I was pumping with gas. I saw this. First, I noticed the nice car that pulled up and then the good looking older gentleman and his wife that got out of the car. He was dressed classy. I, that didn't mean anything for me to want to say hello because I, I love everybody. I'm unconditional love. But this gentleman ended up telling me that he was a general. I asked him questions and I found out he was a general in the military. We ended up striking it up and later I did a keynote speech for his organization. You just never know where striking up a conversation can lead to open doors. But I would say for the conference coming up later this month, make sure that you, I would spend now till then prospecting and bringing 10, 12, 15 visitors to the meeting because it's not just about me at that meeting. You got Steve there, you got Brenda there, you got other leaders there, and you will have other speakers there that are coming in. I'm just a small piece of it, but our goal is, is to always help you and your visitors unleash their greatness within. And that won't happen. They won't emotionally feel what you what is reality unless they come to that meeting. So sorry for that long-winded answer, but those are my thoughts. You're good. You're good. You're awesome. Hey, TJ, thank you yeah. for coming on tonight. I appreciate you. And you betcha. Hey there. So what'd you think? I hope you enjoyed it. I, listen, I know that you have a lot of demands on your attention. There's a lot of distractions out there pulling you in different ways. And so if you watch this video or you listen to the podcast, I just want to say thank you for taking the time out 
a little bit of personal development will take you really far in life if you apply the information. And what you've noticed here tonight is I shared fundamental concepts, core laws of success, that if you will apply them, you will achieve greater results in your life. So if you enjoyed it, hey, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, right? Leave a comment, star the podcast, give me a thumbs up on YouTube, wherever you're watching it or listening to it, leave a comment. I would really appreciate it. All right, now go out there and unleash your greatness within.